In a time lapse, visitors move quickly around a display case where several specimens collected by Hans Sloan are displayed. For the Natural History Museum, arguably the most important colonial story of the collections is those specimens collected by Sir Hans Sloan, the founder of the British Museum. At different angles, a camera focuses on specific specimens collected by Hans Sloan. At the age of 27, Hans Sloan set off on his travels, eventually settling in Jamaica, where over 800 plants, as well as live animals, shells and minerals were collected. Sloan's medical and scientific careers, including the formation of the British Museum and eventually the Natural History Museum collections, were directly funded by profits from slavery. On-screen text reads Han Sloan and Hot Chocolate. Miranda Lau, museum scientist, speaks to the camera. Sloan married Elizabeth Langley Rose, the widow of Falk Rose and daughter of Alderman John Langley. She was a wealthy heiress owning sugar plantations in Jamaica, worked by enslaved Africans. While in Jamaica, Sloan wrote notes on local plants, animals, and enslaved people's customs. Brush strokes of various hues create a beach with palm trees and a cliff in the distance. The sea moves gently. Working as a plantation doctor in Jamaica, Sloan was complicit in slavery. In the same art style, slaves are depicted using sticks to pick fruit from trees as well as the transfer of plants by slave traders from West Africa to the Caribbean. His writings describe many aspects of enslaved Africans' lives in detail, and he also collected a number of their cultural artefacts, including musical instruments. As well as being known as an avid collector, Sloan is often thought of as the inventor of drinking chocolate with milk, but according to historian James Del Burgo, the Jamaicans were brewing a hot beverage brewed with shavings of freshly harvested cocoa, boiled with milk and cinnamon, as far back as 1494. An animation of an elongated cacao pod swinging gently. Sloan encountered the cacao bean when he was in Jamaica, where the local enslaved people drank it mixed with water though he found it nauseating. Text on a page reads, It was a year before I could drink of it, for which the Indians would laugh at me. Sloan, 1707. Many recipes for mixing chocolate with spice, eggs, sugar and milk were in circulation by the 17th century. All of this brings back childhood memories to me of when my parents, who were from the Caribbean, both moved to the UK in the 1960s used to receive what my family would call spice parcels of cinnamon, nutmeg, bay leaves and dried cocoa balls. The cocoa ball would be grated and boiled in water to make cocoa tea. The tea was sharp in taste, but we would add condensed milk to make it sweet and milky. So I know what Sloan was talking about when he mentioned a bit of tea. While his personal views on slavery and the slave trade are not clear, Sloan wrote in detail about the knowledge enslaved Africans had of plants, though he did not seem to value their medical traditions and interpretations. He wrote that local people were helpful in locating plants, but he thought they could not use them beneficially without wider knowledge, and indeed he felt that they may have done harm with them. Sloan also wrongly thought no diseases or medical conditions existed in the Caribbean that he had not seen in Europe, and therefore preferred treatments used by Europeans, such as bloodletting and purging, as opposed to traditional cures. In the next video, we'll go up to the second floor balcony of Hinsey Hall to see its spectacular botanical ceiling panels and hear the final story in this series, the story of Graman Kwasi, the botanist, healer and spy. On the left-hand side, a narrow navy blue rectangle displays the video credits. Film, Lizzie Tilly. Science, Miranda Lau. Animation, Anthony Morley. Music, Audio Network. The Natural History Museum logo, consisting of the letters NHM repeated in a concentric circular formation, is displayed on the right-hand side. Text at the bottom reads copyright owned by the trustees of the Natural History Museum, London.